Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Welcome to a new video. When you're playing indoor hockey, the penalty corner is really important and there are many different options that you have. So today we're going to look at the options for the penalty corner in indoor hockey. All right, so in indoor hockey, you usually have about five main penalty corners and variations that everyone uses. And the first one is where you, and that's the, little, the cool thing about indoor hockey, is that in indoor hockey, you can uh, inject from both sides. Outdoor, we usually only inject from the, from the right side. Um, but in indoor, you can go left and right, which makes it hard for the defenders and for the goalkeeper. So the first option is to be sort of at a 45 degree angle. Why? because that means the ball will come into play sooner. And because compared to outdoor hockey, everyone needs to be on the left side of the goal, except for the goalkeeper. That's why usually in indoor hockey, the goalkeeper charges out. So from receiving the ball to actually releasing the flick needs to be like a split second. So you can't trap the ball and then like outdoor do a crossover and then make it really long, because then you're going to release the ball around here and the goalie is going to be right in front of your nose. So, when the ball comes out, what you actually want to do is you want to prepare your footwork before you start, before the ball comes, that when you receive the ball, that you're already in motion. And from here, you get a quick release, just about one stick length, and that'll give you the best opportunity to score. All right, so because you always have one player on that position, the second player usually positions in front of the goal where usually the normal drag flicks are from. And the good thing about that is that the goalkeeper doesn't know to which one he has to charge. So the option, and for the injector, is that he can choose if he goes to the first or the second player. If the goalkeeper thinks it's going there and the ball comes here, then you have a lot of opportunities to score from here. And the thing is pretty much the same. You need to be quick on your reception and quick on your release. And if you do it quickly, it's, it's really hard to defend. So looking at footwork, the way that I like to do it, but it's, it's a personal thing for everyone, is I try to keep an open stance where I sort of have a 90 degrees with my feet. So I have my right foot, I have like this, and my left foot open. And what, what that helps me is that when I get the ball, that I can receive and step in with left. And then from here, the drag flick is quick. So instead of being closed like this, having to turn, try and open your body, and when you get the ball, you can release quickly. All right, so the next variation is, a, is actually a variation on a direct flick. It's because you have both positions um, uh, with, with both players. If the goalie runs and you play it sideways, you can play like a, uh, a bunt flick. Uh, and that's one of the first variations that's been used a lot. Usually you play a straight line so that the player who's standing here knows exactly where the ball's gonna come. Usually about half a meter inside the D, so you can really step into it. So you're in this position, and that when you know where the ball's gonna come, you can step in and it's more of a one time. It's not a long drag flick, it's a quick sort of chip into the goal. It looks like this. All right, PC option number four is actually the normal PC like we do in outdoor hockey. You have one trapper at the top of the D, you have one injector, and what you're pretty much doing is you're gonna try and get a lot of speed on the injection, and the, the, the drag flick after needs to be short and quick, and uh, everyone knows what's gonna happen, but still, uh, it's, it's the best way to get a nice rhythm, so it's a good variation to score. So like this, stop. I'm not a very good trapper. And then when the ball comes in here, then the drag flicker is ready and it's just as fast as you can. All right, so when we're doing this, usually on the field, we have a run up like this and we have a drag flick and we're going, and it takes too much time. So in indoor hockey, what you're gonna try and do is you're gonna try and be really close towards the ball. That when the ball comes, you can have an early pickup and it's pretty much a quick, just a quick flick. Uh, shouldn't be more than like that, so don't drag it too long. 
So if the ball is coming in, it's got a stick, then just a quick flick, decide where you're gonna go, and then you can go left or right. All right, so the fifth and final straight variation that there is, is that you can actually be on the top of the D, let everyone think you're gonna uh, flick straight, and then at the last moment, you can dig it behind the back, and then the person who's on the bunt side can have a straight flick. And because all the defenders need to start on that side of the post, they need to cross over behind the goalkeeper. It takes quite a bit of time. So if the rhythm is good, inject, trap, slip, then that player should have enough time and a nearly open goal to, to try and score. Okay, so there's two variations that you can do to try and fool the goalkeeper. And that's always a lot of fun. So the first one is when you're on the first position on the 45 degree angle, you can receive the ball, you can fake the slip to the left and then take it back and finish off by yourself. So if you really want to do something spectacular, then what you can do is you can turn it into a one and a half spin. So you're actually faking the bunt and you're continuing your spin and then fooling pretty much everyone on the court. All right, guys, there is the penalty corner variations for you. I hope you like them. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.